Hello, it's Andy from PCR Global. A couple of minutes video on the scope, the context and the criteria with regards to risk management and what is sort of stated or give the guidance given ISO 31000. So scope, context and criteria. It's not often you actually hear those words when you're dealing with organisations or speaking to health and safety managers, security managers, risk managers. Um, it's not often you actually hear them actually discussing that. So it can, when you look at the standard, it can look at a bit of a black art, but actually it is, it's the basics of risk assessment when, when you actually consider the relevant scenario. So if you're not doing generic risk assessments, if you're doing focused, targeted uh, risk assessments, then you're going to cover the scope, the context and criteria, probably without knowing it. But Let's, let's let's cover it. Let's cover it quite quickly because it can be covered quickly. Scope, context, and criteria. I believe it is clause six, six three, maybe. And ultimately, the scope. So, what do we mean by that? What's included? What isn't included? Nor is the purpose of doing this. So, the purpose of defining the scope, um, defining the criteria, understanding the internal and external context. The purpose of that. That's important. I should have said that first. But we need to do that because we need to customise the risk assessment process. Because if we don't customise the risk assessment process, we're going to end up with the potentially wrong risk treatment. So the purpose of the scope, the context and the criteria is to enable, uh, is to define, is to define um, and customise the risk assessment process, which will then in itself enable appropriate and effective risk treatments. So that's the purpose of this. I should have covered that first. So the scope, yeah, what's included? What isn't, what isn't included? This could be an area, couldn't it? It could also be, when you're talking about the scope, what tools, what techniques are we gonna use? So this is, this is interesting. If you think of health and, the world of health and safety, um, when we think of the scope of our risk assessment, right, what's it gonna, what type of risk assessment do we require? What's it bound by? Is it bound by certain uh, a regulation that may require a certain type of risk assessment? So if we're talking about noise, then we're going to end up thinking about documents like L108 and obviously the potential use of a sound level meter. If we talk about hand arm vibration, then we're looking at L140 and the sort of ready reckoners and the items that come with that. So the scope is really, really important. The majority of people, especially doing health and safety risk assessments, they got a three by three, five by five matrix taken from somewhere else. The criteria on that matrix that we'll talk about in a minute, actually, it's, they don't even know what adds up to what. So they're just copying what else is in there. When you actually analyze and sort of investigate what these numbers mean, usually they'll always add up, but they won't add up, if you know what I mean. So the scope is really important. The context. Then when we're considering the context, we're looking at, obviously we've got the internal and the external context. But ultimately, if we talk about the internal context, this could be the sort of the, the, the objectives, the vision, the mission, the values of the organization. What actually matters to the organization? Because you've got to take that, then you've got to use that as part of your criteria. So internal context, if you look at the external context, what can we think about there? I always sort of refer then to PESTL. So any political, economical, social, technical, legal, environmental. Again, those influences which are outside of the organisation but impacting the organisation. If you can have it, get it in your mind, that scope, context. As soon as you come to the context, then you go external, you go internal, and ultimately you are going to cover a number of these areas. So if you're just leaving your health and safety manager, your HSQE manager, your quality manager, or your security manager, do these on their own, and not explaining anything to them, and just letting them get on with it, you really are going to miss all of this. And if it goes wrong, then on your head be it. So the scope, the context, internal, external, and the criteria. It's the criteria. Wow, this is the crutch of it now. This really is uh, the actual activities. This is a situation, really. What really matters. So there's two things I always think about. And again, it does give reference to it in the standards. Two things within this criteria sort of element. And that is... The company has to determine how much risk it is willing to either take or not take. So that's the first thing. You've got to determine that. So that's what we're trying to get to in it. How much are we willing to take or how much are we not willing to take? But the second part is how is the company or how are we, how is the company, how are we going to work out the significance 
of that risk. So when we do our hazard, hazard spotting risks, but I call it what you want, what are we going to use to work out how significant that is? So by using the term significant, then we maybe start thinking likelihood, severity. That's going to give us some significance there. But it's not about numbers. Okay, we need to work out potentially high, medium or low. But what leads to that? Purposely, what I like using, I like looking at the objectives of the organisation the morals of the organization, the standing of the organization. You've got to take those into consideration. So in a live scenario, if we're a security company and we're doing a risk assessment, again, if we think about reputational risk or moral risk, then ultimately, how much are we going to pay our guys? How much are we going to pay contractors? Are we going to bring in foreign labor, as some organizations call it, and do it, and actually end up paying a lot less for the actual service because they, they, they've, they've got to pay less for, for the individuals. So when we think of the criteria, it's not just likelihood and severity. That is part of it. We've got to work out, um, try and work out what tools we're going to use. How can we work out likelihood? What tools we're going to use? How can we work out possibility, probability? But it's not, the criteria isn't just about that. It actually should take into consideration the actual objectives, the morals of the organisation. So the scope, the context and the criteria. Clause 6.3, not very often um, recorded. I like to record this on my risk assessments because if somebody else is reading it, uh, especially in, in the event of an incident, and I don't do it just for that, but if somebody is, is, is reading it after my days, after I've gone, they're going to look, they're going to fully understand. So I'm looking at the scope, the context and the criteria. What I might write at the start of my risk assessment is, do people work day or night? Where are they working? Are we on a client site? So what laws are involved? So the person reading it then really understood, understands what my thoughts and feelings were at that time when I was doing that assessment. And I think that's very, very important. So that's it. Well, that's seven minutes. I didn't mean to go that long, but it is such an important area, not a well understood area, and it's not a black art. So the scope, the context, the criteria basically means what are we doing? But the reason we are doing it is we need to customise the risk assessment in order to enable effective and efficient risk treatment. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.